Hi friends, welcome to Offer Studies YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to discuss about how to stream the response back from the Azure function, which is HTTP trigger type. We already know that if you have created a HTTP trigger type uh, Azure function, it basically acts like an API. Okay, so API which will take a request, okay, which will take a request and it will give the response back. Okay, so let's assume this is an API. It will take a request and it will give the response back. Now, when it is returning a response back, I don't want to return the whole response. Maybe I want to stream the response back. What I mean by that is, uh, let's assume um, it is actually giving a numbers back, maybe 1 to 10, or maybe it is giving some sensor data, maybe it is giving some temperature data. I don't want the whole data to come at the same time. I want the data to get stream and come in chunks, okay, one after another, one after another. Is it possible to achieve that kind of a functionality, the streaming response functionality in Azure functions? Then the answer is yes. To do that, basically we need to uh, use the HTTP endpoints using fast API in Azure functions, okay. So there is something called HTTP streams that will let you accept and return the data uh, in chunks okay and uh, that is how it is possible because of http endpoints uh, which uses the fast api if all this is making not sense at this point of moment if it is confusing don't worry about it when we see a practical example you will get a more make you will make more sense by default in azure functions this kind of a streaming response functionality will not be enabled we need to enable that so how to enable that to do that Firstly, we need this package to be installed Azure Functions Extensions HTTP Fast API. This Fast API package, which is exclusively designed for Azure Functions, helps you to stream the data back or response back. And also, you need to Python enable init index in value. We have to set it to 1. So, if you are running your function in locally, then in local settings.json file, you have to put that value. Uh, if you are doing that in Azure, that means after you host the Azure function, then you have to do in the app settings. Let me practically show you that, so that you will get a more sense of it. Uh, and uh, you, you can try that example. Uh, I will give the code as well in the video description. So what I will do now is, I will try to open a Visual Studio and create a Azure function. So let me quickly do that. I have opened Visual Studio code. And you know that uh, if you have seen my create Azure function using Python video in Azure functions made easy playlist, you already know that. Otherwise, we will quickly follow the steps. Press F1 and select Azure functions create new project. And it will pop up the file explorer from the local. And let me navigate to certain location where I can create this project. So I am creating a new folder here. I will say maybe stream HTTP az function that is azure function name i want to give so i created a folder with that name and i am selecting that folder so python is the language which i want to select so select that and yeah of course python then this time i have to maybe give the uh, trigger type http trigger type and uh, let me name this maybe the same thing stream http azure function okay so let me hit enter anonymous authentication is fine for me open in current window so this actually creates the uh, Python project for Azure functions in my local. You see that it will create a virtual environment as well. What is virtual environment? It's like a, a sandbox. It's like a, a mini version of your system in which you can install the required packages for this particular project to run. If you don't know what is virtual environments in Python, please watch my Python playlist. Uh, you, will, you will find one video for the same or you can search for any other video in YouTube as well. So now all good, let me close this welcome tab and let me close this github copilot as well. Now here, if I go to function app.py, this is the actual uh, function app uh, function file where the actual function will get written. I am going to change this whole code. So to do that, what I am going to do it is, see if I go back here, firstly, I, I have to install this package as well. So let me copy this package and let me go back to my Visual Studio code explorer requirements.txt and I am adding that package as well. So I am saving it now. Now what I will do, I will open a terminal here. So let me open a terminal 
and uh, I will see my terminal opened in a virtual environment by default. That is the reason you see this VENV. Uh, now within this virtual environment, I want to install that packages. So what I will do pip install hyphen r requirements dot txt. So when I run this command in the requirements dot txt file, whatever the packages we have, uh, my Visual Studio code will identify them and it will install them in the virtual environment. So let the installation complete here. As you can see, the installation is completed. So now I will go to the explorer. I will go to the function underscore app dot py file. Let me minimize that file explorer. And this is where I have to change the code. So what I will do, I will go to my one note uh, and I will try to import that. So I will try to copy paste this whole code. But before doing that, I need to do one more step, which is I have to set these settings in my local settings.json file. So let me copy that and let me go to uh, again the explorer local settings.json and this is where I have to set that value to 1 actually. Okay. So I have to set this value to 1. Also, let me copy this Azure Web Jobs storage value so that the local storage emulator, I can give it to my Azure functions. This you know my from my previous video already or the create Azure function from the Python video. So let me give that value as well for the local run. Done. So now what I'm going to do here, I'm going to replace this whole function app dot py file code here and I will try to explain what that code does. So let me go here and uh, let me copy this whole function app dot py file code copy control C control A control V. Now let me save these changes and let me quickly explain what is happening here. So basically what we are doing it here is uh, I think I don't need this function. Let me delete it. Uh, basically this app is a variable which created from the function app uh, method that will create a object for your function app and then you see this, uh, let me change this uh, function name to stream HTTP AZ function. Okay, so that's the name I want to give. And uh, stream sensor data, that is a method name I gave, but this is the other function name technically, which responds to get and post request. Okay, and uh, I am trying to look for the input underscore text value either from the query string are from the request body when the request happens to this function app from the query string or from the request body i am trying to see if there is any input underscore text value uh, a key value sent or not okay if it is se sent uh, well and good and if it is if it not sent then it will return a response saying uh, please send the input text why i'm using this is uh, just for the purpose where you can make sense that i'm able to send some data to the api or not i'm not going to use that uh, key value anywhere in the logic so what is my main logic is so this is the one this generates gen function so what this gen function is doing basically if you see firstly it is yielding the input to text that means the request what i send uh, uh, the input text value via uh, via request body or via query parameter that i am yielding it yielding means giving the partial results back uh, you need to see this uh, if you have, don't know what is yield uh, please watch my python playlist again i have explained about this yield so basically when when the execution hits this yield then the function will return that particular data back immediately and it will continue to execute the further steps and what is happening in the further steps i am looping a for uh, i am doing a for iterator here for 10 times because range 10 will give 10 values 1 to 10 and every time i am increasing the temperature and humidity values from certain constant values and i am simply returning them and whatever I'm returning them inside that for loop, I'm yielding them for every iteration. That means uh, one iteration will happen, it will return the data, and again second iteration will happen, again it will return. It's not like the whole data will get written for all the 10 values. Every iteration it will return because of the yield keyword. So that is the uh, that is like a behavior of a streaming response. So now this function is capable enough to stream the data. I, I am making the function. Uh, function call to delay for one second for every uh, every iteration so that I can sense the uh, gap between one line to another line. So this is looks fine. 
function is able to stream the data back but how to uh, how to invoke this function uh, and then make sure the http response also will come in a same fashion where it is giving the data back in chunks so to do that if you closely observe here for the function right um, let me uh, see i am i have i am importing this streaming response right from the library so that that's where that's where the magic happens this streaming response uh, will actually create a object that will ha that has a capability to stream the data back okay so now for the streaming response i am giving this function which i have to execute it and uh, i am explicitly mentioning the media type as text or event stream because it is a event stream right i am streaming the data back uh, with every event okay so that media type uh, value to set text slash event type is very important uh, and use the streaming response to create the object before returning is also very very important to stream the data back so when i run this function uh, it it will perfectly work uh, i can test that also but it's not like a normal url where i can go and hit it and it will stream the data back for me to test this kind of an apis you actually need a certain certain python code to do that okay so what i will be doing it now is uh, firstly let's make sure whether this function will run or not so i will hit f5 to check whether this function run it or not and uh, let's wait for this execution to complete and see uh, you see that function core tools are running functions core tools is azure functions local environment runtime that will run the function locally and i should see the url back first that 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 means uh, my function is running good so let me minimize this debug window and you see this url came back so that means my function is running well now i have to hit this uh, api what i got it here and i have to see whether the data is returning back in chunks or not okay and uh, what technically data should return is whatever i passed in the input text uh, uh, that it has to return first because that is the value it is yielding here first then inside the iterator 10 times it will return the temperature and humidity as well each iteration one one time with one second gap so let's see all that happens or not so to see that what i will do i will try to use a visual studio code and i will create a one more python file another project and uh, there i will write small uh, python code to make the api call to this url what we just now created it so what i will be doing it here is uh, let me open folder and what i will do i will go to the same src uh, and uh, maybe i will create one folder here called python testing okay so let me create that folder now let's assume this is a client file for the api so what i am going to do in this visual studio code i am going to create testing.py python file and uh, here i will try to write few lines of a python code that will make the api call to this uh, streaming api so if i go back to my uh, one node uh, let me copy paste this code so control c control v now if you observe this code whenever you want to hit a api which streams the data back use this http x library okay i have imported that then i am trying to use the asynchronous client a method on top of it to create a client object then with that client object i am trying to use the stream method to stream the data back okay uh, and whatever the data comes uh, it will comes in the response object uh, and this response object will continuously return the uh, receives the data in chunks and to read the chunks i am using this attire lines so every chunk will be called like a one line so what i am doing using a asynchronous for line i am taking every chunk using the attire lines and printing that every line okay so that means the all the temperature and humidity details 10 times it will print uh, and uh, it will run the whole execution as well so let's practically see whether it will work or not so to run this code uh, see first thing one change what i did it here is i have taken the url of my azure local execution function and i am using a query parameter input string and sending some value to it if i don't use the query parameter as i said it will return us back saying pass that query parameter so let me show you that uh, let me run this now now if i run it it will say immediately function execution is successful but uh, pass the input to text that's what it is trying to say so later uh, let's do control z here and let me save these changes now let's try to run this execution 
now this time you should show the data back you see you see it is retaining every line at a time that means in the iterator of that function where the temperature and humidity is calculation every time it is yielding the data back as a streaming data and that streamed data we are seeing back printing it here on the screen so api is not returning this whole data at a time it is actually returning line by line that means it it is returning the chunks so this kind of an functionality uh, many year developers will face uh, in their day to day in, uh, real time implementations so i felt that this video might be helpful for them how to create a azure function that will stream the data back um, and how to how to write the client side of a code to consume that function where it is streaming the response back okay so i will give this sample code in the video description uh, so please take it from there uh, i hope you guys find this video helpful thank you for watching have a nice day